Hey guys, so we've got Rory Kleinfeld on the show. Let's just start and say that first and foremost. That's a daily show with a special guest. And we're going to be talking about T20 cricket, understanding the game. And no better person to ask than someone like Rory, especially in going into a tournament right now, which is a knockout comp uh, competition for South African domestic cricket. And it will be excellent to get some insights from him on the game, about the T20 game. You know this coincides with our magazine this month as well. We've got the T20 magazine this month about domestic game, domestic cricket all around the world, shaping T20 players. So go ahead and click the eye on the top of the screen for that, and you can get that. And in the description as well, you'll be able to get that 100% free to your mailbox every single month, every single issue, all back issues, 100% free. But you know what you have to do before we get started. You have to subscribe if you're new. You have to click that notification bell for all future videos as well. Smash that like button, comment, share, subscribe, do all of those things too. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about this because this is going to be some proper insight that we're going to be getting on today's show. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's interview. Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your daily show. I'm your host, Khalid Mohirin. This is my co-host, Aditya, and we're joined today by Rory Kleinfeld. Now, very interesting because the man's going to have a very busy, busy couple of months. Uh, we know about that. <laughs> so it's great to see you. How are you doing? Thanks, Khalid. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, man. How are you? Uh, good, thank you. Uh, no, Aditya is excited about this one. So uh, let's get <laughs> straight into let's get straight into it, man. Um, so we we saw recently getting a gig with the Cobras, um, or Western Province Blitz, as they're called now. Um, excellent for you. Um, we know about your history, obviously, you. with with the Western Province as well and with the Cobras. Taking that coaching role and your journey into coaching, just give me some insight into that transition from becoming a player, senior player, and then a coach. I think we just lost him for a second. I think he might have just gotten a call or something. Let's just wait for him to come back. Um, yeah, Aditya, looking, I'm very excited about this one as well. Uh, how are you doing, man? I'm well, I'm well. Uh, the IPL, of course, is on. And that's my 7 o'clock entertainment every day. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm having the time of my life. Yeah, has been great. That awesome. So we got Rory back I again. Just got a, I just <laughs> a phone got a call. call there. Apologies. <laughs> no problem, man. So yeah, just tell us a little bit about your coaching journey, the transition from player to coach. Yeah, look, it's been interesting. Um, obviously, I can't go out there and do things myself anymore. I can't go and affect games my, on my own. Um, so for me, it's just about obviously passing on my knowledge um, or my playing experience that I've uh, accumulated over over about 20 years of playing professional cricket. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm working with the SA, in the SA and the 19 setup um, at Marty's as well, and now with uh, Western Province for, for this competition. So yeah it's been cool it's been really cool I've, I've i've enjoyed every minute of it um it's lots of hard work my arm is quite sore from throwing balls <laughs> um <laughs> but um yeah it's all worth it in the end so i think it brings me to my first question of today's interview because that was just a little bit of an intro uh it's about this new knockout competition and it's something new at first i was like oh this is going to be like the fa cup of you know cricket in a way in domestic cricket you know so uh we, we know that is under 19 are going to be a part of this as well and you now with uh, vp blitz as well so when it comes to 
picking teams in in these particular tournaments when you know there's going to be obviously knockout games and there's going to be semi-finals and it's going to be a proper um best of the best playing within the domestic setup yeah how do you go into this with preparation because i don't think that the time that you may be in t20 cricket is a lot different to other um particular formats so from a strategic point of view how do you go into a competition like this as a coach yeah, look, I mean, we all know T20 cricket's a lot more explosive than, than the other two formats. So um, just just opening the guys' minds up to, to being a lot more freer in the way they play, um, backing their skills and their abilities and, and, and sort of developing new, interesting sort of shots or deliveries that, that can be different, you know. Um, I think T20 cricket's evolved since when I started playing it uh, to what it is now, it's, it's a lot faster. It's, it's a lot more innovative. Um, and those are the type of players that, um, that succeed at this level. People who are, who are able to open up their minds to new things and, and explore, explore different things to, to try and be effective in this format. Uh, hi Rory, welcome to the show again. Uh, Thank you. Since since you started playing T uh, Twenty cricket, as you just said, you know it's it's evolved quite a bit and it's become faster. Yeah. Uh, how, where do you think South Africa is at the moment, vis a vis the rest of the world, in terms of yeah. the way they play T Twenty cricket? Mm. Yeah, it's a <laughs> it's an interesting question. Um, yeah, uh, to be honest, two week, two months ago, before we played the West Indies, I was I was a bit concerned in the way we, the way we played and the way we approached T Twenty cricket. I felt like um, we needed to free up a lot more, particularly in the middle period um, between overs seven and and fifteen. Um, our lack of boundary hitting ability in that period of of play kind of hindered us a little bit, but then we went on and beat um, beat the world champions. Um, so I think the guys will take a lot of confidence in that um, because we'll probably experience similar conditions in Dubai and Oman. Um, so beating the world champions in the West Indies um, will, will, like I said, give the guys a lot of confidence going into the tournament. Um, our frontline bowlers are bowling beautifully at the moment. Um, we saw Anrich bowl well yesterday or the day before, and KG is in the wickets as well. So, um, on a bowling point of, from a bowling point of view, we, you always want um, want the bowlers to be thinking about taking wickets. Um, that's the best way to to affect games in in T20 cricket. I think gone are the days of bowlers bowling four overs, not for 24, and and being happy with that, you know, uh, that sort of, those sort of figures don't affect games anymore. So I think the, the three for 40 or the four for 40, those kind of, those kind of uh, performances affect games a lot more. Um, and, and yeah, those, those kind of performance win you matches, which is the most important thing in T20 cricket. You know, you know, we've talked a lot about uh, team composition. On, on the show previously and it seems as if in in the last few years teams have have got a bunch of all-rounders whether it's spinning all-rounders or mm -hmm. fast bowling all-rounders but they do seem to bat to nine or ten and i was wondering what your view is on that and whether that's something teams in, in domestic south african competitions are looking to do yeah yeah look i'm in england england have led the way in that where They've been lucky enough to have um, serious bowlers who can bat as well. Um, and and I think that's sort of when, when you're looking at composition of teams or setting teams up, um, all-rounders will always be at the forefront in this format, I think, because um, if you want to play that expansive brand of cricket, you, you need to be able to bat deep. And um, I think... Yeah, the best teams in the world probably probably have that uh, in their in their makeup. 
Now, uh, I want to know about this under 19 because uh, the next generation is so important. And we, we talk often about first class cricket and that our youngsters maybe don't get enough chances to play the longer format of the game. But let's just fast forward to now T20 cricket. We have a T20 World Cup coming around the corner and it's all about prepping people for the World Cup that's going to be important to play in a massive tournament like that. Now, strike rates are so important. We know all of, uh, about that and striking at the right periods of games and all of those type of things. But when you're working with SI under 19 boys, when I mean, I know that at school level, at certain schools, they play a lot of T20 cricket. There's always those big T20 tournaments, you know, like the Bishops of Ronobosh Derby, you know about that locally. That's under lights and there's a lot of pressure in that. I know at Kaya Majolo Week as well, there, there is T20 games that you play, a T20 game that you play. There's a T20, a old CSA T20 tournament that happens for youngsters under 19 as well. But since you've been working with under 19 setup, can you give me some insight into what sort of lessons you teach them at that stage? Because when you when you get to the S under 19 level, you yes, you are better than the rest and in your age group, but there's still a lot of to improve. So, so what sort of tips do you give them without really messing around with a technique too much or messing around with what they have learned so far at that point? Yeah, look, I mean, they're still very wet behind the ears. Um, they've, they've still got a lot to learn. Uh, there's certain things within school cricket that I don't really agree with, um, but be that as it may, uh, we, we've started this journey with these under-19 boys uh, last year, sort of May, I think. And um, the, the the brand of cricket that we want to play is is attacking cricket, you know. Uh, obviously, conditions depending, um, but we want to instill um, guys to to take the positive options rather than being circumspect, you know. Um, and I think in our team makeup as well, we we've kind of adopted the same approach that England have in terms of trying to get as many all-rounders as we can in our team uh, so that it frees our batsmen up top, um, frees them up to to be able to play that way, you know. So um, that's the sort of approach that we've taken and, and it's been it's been um, quite a long process. Um, obviously, now we, we're going into a T20 competition. We've, we've We've just been preparing for 50 over cricket because our World Cup is in January. It's it's 50 over. It's a 50 over World Cup, so it's going to be interesting to see how they adjust to the shorter format. I think um, the boys will be excited because we know that on a on a given day, one of our players can win a game for us. You know, it's it's. Um, I know we're playing against experienced first class cricketers, but I think our boys are are confident and, um, like I said earlier, they. One one player can win a game in T20 cricket. So um, our our batsmen in particular, they all have that kind of ability. Um, someone can come off and, and win a game, and hopefully they can yeah uh, do well in this competition and give them massive confidence going into the World Cup at the well beginning of next year. And and going into the Western Province team as well, with you have guys. Obviously, you have youngsters, a blend, nice blend of youngsters and experienced guys. Yeah. But it's it's kind of I look at the domestic system as prepping those guys for the next level to play for South Africa one day. Yeah. That's all everybody's dream. How much of it is it to play that attacking brand of cricket? How much of it is it co team composition and picking the right players for the format? And how much of it can you actually change in a player's game? To allow them to play an expansive game i'll give you maybe an example like someone like zubair hamza's game over the last couple of years has obviously evolved and he's played very well in t20s recently calvarain is another example who's really evolved his white ball cricket game um so when it when it when you look at guys like that how much is it picking a guy that is naturally like that and actually can you change the game to actually let them become more explosive particularly in the batting sense yeah look i mean zubair is white ball game from when I started playing with him compared to where he is now has, has gone on leaps and bounds. Um, and just in our preparation um, over the last couple of weeks, you can see that he's done a lot of work on his white ball game, you know. Um, same with Kyle, same with, with most of the players there at Western Province. Um, and I think they've 
like I said, they've, they've, they've opened up their minds to, to different things in the format. You know, they, they, they understand that you almost have to let go of the fear of failure to, to want to succeed at this, uh, at this game. T20 cricket now I'm talking about uh, in particular, um, and, and play with, with freedom and, and just go and express yourself and, and show people what you have, show people your talents and, and enjoy it, you know. Um, they've got uh, four four-day games coming up after this competition, so it's going to be back to the grind for them <laughs> uh, after this. So um, I think they will, they'll go out and enjoy this competition coming up. Just in terms of in terms of the composition of the team, like I said earlier, we we're looking for well, we were looking for for ball strikers and and guys who who can give us uh, three options in terms of bowling, batting, and fielding, and um, hopefully we've got the right balance um, going into this tournament. And yeah, let's let's see how we go. I'm quietly confident. <laughs> How much do you watch uh, overseas leagues, and um, do you do you attempt to uh, sort of get an idea of the brand of cricket being being implemented in those leagues? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm a bit of a cricket badger. I won't lie. Um, I watch a lot of cricket. Um, I, I feel like it's important to to stay in touch with where the game is. You know, um, particularly now being a coach. Um, I, I always did it as a player as well. Um, it's it's massively important to to like I say, stay in touch with where the game is at. Um, trying to see what the new innovations are in the game and and um, trying to kind of figure out what guys are thinking behind possibly field placings and all these kinds of things and and plans on the bowling front and then on the batting side, obviously with with the new innovations of like reverse sweeps and switch hits and all those kind of things. Um, yeah, just just being able to to stay in touch with where the game is at, really. One more, teacher. Sure. Uh, uh, what what are your predictions for the World Cup? And <laughs> ah. yeah. And who who do you see as key players? globally globally okay predictions for the world cup sure it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to look past teams like the west indies and england and india um like i said south africa built up some nice momentum now going into the tournament um, um our fast bowlers are, are performing particularly well even on on slower decks as well so um i think we have it we could have a, a a slight chance there i think um if you had asked me that two months ago i probably would have said no we, we probably don't have any chance but um i think we're coming into form at the right time um and hopefully guys um kind of maintain that form through the ipl and and take it into the world cup for, um, in a south african context um and then players around the world Oh, uh, there, there are so many, so many guys. I think from South Africa, I would say um, Quinny de Kock, Aiden Markham, and then the, the two fast bowlers that I mentioned earlier, uh, Anrich and, and KG are going to be big players for for South Africa. Um, and then around the world, guys like Shaw, Jason Roy, um, if he makes the squad. <laughs> um, <laughs> Obviously, Kohli, Kohli, uh, Rohit Sharma, and those guys. Um, and then from West Indies, I mean, you can rattle off so many names from the West Indies. Those guys are so dangerous that um, they're going to be hard to beat. Um, and then there's a guy from New Zealand who, who's caught my eye, um, who looks a very dangerous player, Glenn Phillips. Um, he looks like someone who could, could win games off his own bat um, and... I think he will, if he gets a gig with New Zealand, I think he will he will perform well for them. Lastly, from me, it's just a tip to young all-rounders. Because, I mean, we're trying to create an atmosphere of, at a lot of places. We're trying to create the next generation of all-rounders. 
And South Africa for a long time were looking and searching for that, searching for that for the Proteas um, 11. And they've now tried to kind of find a lot of guys coming through the system. But can you give some tips to the young, the next generation of young all-rounders? How do they focus on the, the two disciplines? And and do they have to determine which type of all-rounder they are from a young age, like batting or bowling all-rounder? Or do you just tell them to just be as free as possible and practice as much in both disciplines? What's your advice to the young all-rounders, the next generation? Yeah, look, for me, I, I'd encourage them to spend as much time on, on both skills, you know. Um, like I said, we, we're looking for people who can affect games in all three disciplines, fielding, batting and bowling, you know. So if you if you bring that to the party, work hard on it, you know, um, and, and kind of... When you're playing short form cricket, I think you have to, like I said earlier, let go of the fear of failure. Stop looking at averages. I think look more at strike rates and and how you how you can affect games in that way. You know, um, yeah. So so yeah, just enjoy yourself, <laughs> have fun, because you know when you play four day cricket and you're gonna spend two days in the dirt, you're gonna wish that you you're gonna wish that you had a lot more fun playing T20 cricket. <laughs> <laughs> awesome thanks a lot Rory, for coming on the show giving us your time at this time of the evening thanks a lot to everybody for tuning in don't forget to subscribe to the latest issue of the magazine and click the eye on the screen and in the description as well uh the eye will only be active tomorrow morning so because this is a live stream so go ahead and click the description um the, the is a the title in the description or a link in the description for you to download the latest issues Thanks a lot for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow with another Q&A show. Take care, Rory, and good luck for the season. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me.